Hey, I'm Dan Thomas, and welcome to my channel for the Newbie Woodworker. Or anyone, really. In my last video, I showed off my prototype crosscut sleds that work without having to remove the blade guard. If you haven't seen that video, check it out first. This video is about how to build the half sled. Keep your eyes open for the full sled build video, which should be coming out soon. Which sled should you build? The full sled supports the stock on both sides of the blade, including at the back, which can help prevent tear out. But it's a little more work to build, and it's usually bulkier and heavier than the half sled. The half sled still helps prevent tear out, but only on one side of the stock. But it's lighter and easier to build, and it lets you cut stock as tall as your blade will allow and not affect the sled. With the full sled, the higher you raise the blade, the further the kerf goes into the back of the sled. And the shorter this section gets, the greater the chance of it splitting. Of course, if it does split, you can just make another one. It's not really that hard. But if you expect to cut thicker wood, you probably want to build the half sled, or at least build the full sled with an extended back section. A couple of other possible advantages of the half sled are that you may be able to use it with the dado stack or when you tilt your blade. More on this later. But regardless of which sled you decide to build, you're going to watch both videos when they're available and give them both thumbs up, right? Okay, last thing. I'll be showing links for other videos that might be relevant, and I hope they don't feel like pop-up ads. But I've worked hard on these videos. Hey, it's what I do. Hey, it's what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. I also have various product links available, and if you buy from those links, they help out my channel a little. Thanks in advance. I'm building this sled to go on the left side of my blade. Since I use my rip fence on the right side of the blade, this lets me use a stop block on the fence for repeat cuts. Also, this lets me use the sled with a dado stack, since the dado stack expands this way away from the sled. The next time I need to make cuts with a tilted blade, I'll consider building another sled for the right side of the blade. Anyway, feel free to build yours for whichever side you want. So let's get started. Cut the sled base first, so you're sure of the dimensions. This is half-inch Baltic birch plywood, but any relatively flat plywood will do. And you can use three-quarter inch if you'd prefer. I'm trying to decide if it's safe to do this cut against the rip fence, because it's kind of a cross cut. The base will be 17 inches by 14 and a half inches. But I finally decide that although it's probably a safe cut, I can cut it using my prototype full sled. The stock doesn't quite fit on it, but since it doesn't have a front fence, this works out fine. For the full sled, I'll make the fence out of two pieces of plywood. But for this half sled, I'm making the fence out of a piece of 2x4, just to show you a different way to make a fence. If you want a plywood fence, check out this video, or watch the full sled build video when it comes out. You want to pick a piece of 2x4 that's relatively straight and dry. Make sure it says KD, which stands for Kiln Dried. You want your fence as straight as possible, so I really shouldn't have used this piece of 2x4 since it's obviously not straight. But I decided I wanted to try it anyway, and it actually ended up working out okay. Still, try to use a nice straight section of 2x4 if you can. You should cut your fence to at least the width of the base, or even a little wider. So cut off the top and bottom of the 2x4. You want to end up with a piece that's shorter than your blade when it's raised all the way up. Mine ended up around 3 inches tall, which keeps it just a little short of the height of my blade. I could have made it shorter, of course. Then trim off the sides. This is where I'm trying to see if I can get a straight cut on my 2x4. The entire piece will stay in contact with my rip fence during the cut, so I think it'll work. I'm using a feather board to make sure the 2x4 doesn't move away from the fence. I checked it on my table saw and it seems pretty straight. Now I've got a flat side I can use against the fence to trim the other side. I'm checking to see if one side is straighter than the other, and it looks like one actually is straighter, so I mark some arrows on it so I know which way to attach it. I'm planning on using this section of the video in both the half sled and full sled build videos, so bear that in mind. The half sled only needs one runner. The full sled needs two. So I'll be making three, but I usually make more than one anyway because I'll always have a need for them at some point in the future. By the way, if you have a table saw with a tabbed miter slot, like some craftsmen and Ryobi saws have, see my video on how to make runners for them. I've started making my runners shorter than the base, so they don't hit the floor if I stand my sled up. I like to make runners out of plywood. It's easy to find and dimensionally stable. I want them thin enough so they don't hit the bottom of the miter slot when I use the sled. 
So I normally use 3 quarter inch plywood, and when I get them to the right size, I split them in two. I usually use a microjig gripper with the 1 8 inch leg attachment to support both sides of the cut. And I end up with two runners that are a good thickness for the miter slot. But I have some half inch plywood I want to use up. It's a little too thick for my miter slot, so I'm trimming it down. I'm using a feather board to keep the runner next to the fence. And I'm using this John Heist style push stick, which has already been through the blade a few times. It looks like it's about time to make a new one. So cut a runner a little wider than your miter slot. And plan your cut better than I did. I had to stop the saw so I could move the gripper. Idiot. Then tap your fence over a little. Trim the end of the runner. And see if it fits. I've always had a hard time moving the fence a small amount. So I actually use a gauge to tell me how much I've moved the fence. Naturally, I've got a video about it. Try not to cut it too narrow, but if you do, switch to the other end of the runner. When you get it right, trim the entire runner. Then cut the other ones if you're doing more than one runner. For some reason, the second runner was a tad too wide, even though the first one is perfect. That really shouldn't be possible. In fact, this has never happened to me before. In any case, I made a really small adjustment and ran it through again, and it's fine. And so was the third one. Who knows what happened? Attaching the runner is pretty simple. Position your rip fence right up next to the blade slot, but don't cover the blade slot. We want to be able to cut a small amount off this side of the base when the runner's glued on. Put some nuts, washers, or spare change in the miter slot so the runner ends up just a little proud of the tabletop. This is too high. We don't want the base to rock this much or the runner might not glue up square to the base. So I switched to washers and that's a lot better. Add glue to the runner. Don't use too much. You don't want to squeeze out and you only need a little glue to hold it on. Put your base up against the rib fence and lay it down on the runner, keeping the base against the fence. Then put some weights on the base and wait an hour or so before you take it off. When the glue is dry, remove this lead and clean up any squeeze out. I like to sand the bottoms to get them smooth. Then try out the sled and make sure it slides okay. You can use something like Johnson's paste wax in the bottom to make it run smoother if you want. And you might need to sand the side of the runner a little if it still binds. I had to reshoot some of this with a different sled, so if you notice anything different or out of order, that's why. Place the sled on your table saw with the runner in the miter slot. Make sure you get it facing the right direction. If you followed my earlier instructions when attaching the runner, a little bit of the base should go over the blade slot. So go ahead and cut it off. Now we know that this edge is parallel to the blade. Well, technically it's parallel to the miter slot, and that's actually what we want. Mark the back edge of the sled so you know where the rear fence goes. It's easy to get confused when you're adding the fence. Keep your eye on the blade edge and flip the sled over. Then draw an arrow towards the blade edge. I like to double check it to make sure. I've made this mistake too many times before. Measure how much room you need for the blade guard and write it down. Err on the side of too much rather than not enough. I'm giving myself one and a quarter inches. And just a reminder, my blade guard sides would drop down behind my fence, preventing me from pulling the sled back. So I'll be moving my fence in two inches and adding a piece of melamine to keep the guard sides from dropping down. I'll mention this again shortly, but probably not very clearly. Because... I forgot to press record the first time I did this next section, so this time I decided to shoot it quote unquote live with me talking on camera while I'm attaching the fence. I don't normally do this, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Okay, so that's the, the blade edge. And this is the rear. Drew a little arrow here to remind me the blade edge is over there. I like to hold this up with a couple of pieces of scrap wood. Okay, so I've already marked on my fence which way I think it ought to go. So for most of you, you're going to put the, fen the fence on the very edge of the sled. Uh, you don't have to get perfect, but you don't need to waste any of the sled. But since I need to have 
a little piece of melamine for the for the blade guard. Uh, I have to move it in about two inches. I've got a piece of scrap wood that's two inches wide and I'll use it to help align this when I'm ready to clamp this down. So the first thing I need to do is mark on the other side of this because we're going to screw up from the underneath where to put the screws. This is about an inch wide so for those of you that are doing it down here you'll want the screws a half inch in. Since I'm going two inches in I need to line two and a half inches in. hope that makes sense. I want to anchor the fence on this side so I can move it like this while I align this to the edge here. So that's this side. Now make sure you use decent quality screws. These are SPACs, similar to GRK or Torx, and these are one and a half inches long. The reason why you want to use these is because we're going to put them in and take them out several times. And regular screws just don't hold up very well, but these work really well for that. Now hopefully you've made your fence longer than your base. You want it to overhang the blade edge because we'll actually trim it a little bit again. For me that means I can make it flush on, on this side. So I'm going to get my clamps ready first. Then I want to use my spacer. Get the fence in roughly the right position. You don't have to be perfect, it's just that you want the screws to go relatively in the center of the fence. That looks about right. So I've got my countersink drill bit set to the right depth for my screws. So let's drill the hole. You want to make sure you go down far enough so that the head of the screw goes below the base. It's always nice to have the vacuum right here. Now I'm going to be screwing into uh, the 2x4 base and I want to make sure that I don't screw it in too tight and strip the base. So so it moves like that. So this is what you want to align it to. So I like this uh, big horn set of squares, precision squares, they're really nice. And, you know, everybody squares ha have these things, but this side is thick and this side is thin. And what that lets you do is set, set this part flat and that part can butt up against the side. Basically all I do is I start out with the fence not square and then just slide it down until it is square. And you can double check by pulling the square down this way and seeing that it looks square all the way across and it doesn't move. And then bring it in this way and make sure that this doesn't come in at an angle. So if it came in like that, I'd know it wasn't square. That looks pretty good. And here's the fun part. I have to clamp this down so I can screw it from the underside without moving the fence. Remember we're gonna cut about a one and a quarter inch slot out of there so the screw's going to come in around there. So I, I want to clamp over here. I don't want the clamp to get in the way. This is not easy to do because these clamps want to, any clamp wants to pull things offline if you're not careful with them. So I need to double check. It's very unusual to get it right the first time. Maybe I've done this enough with my reshoots. Okay, looks good. This is where you want to spend your time. You get it right here, you have a sled that works great. Even the motorcyclists will like it. This is just to keep it stable. I'm coming in an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter with the slot for the blade guard. So let's put this screw in about two inches. Exactness is not required. Again, deep enough that the screw head goes underneath the surface so it doesn't scratch up your table saw. And then I'm just going to sand these off a little bit. 
just to keep them from dragging on the table saw. And now for the moment of truth. How well did I do? Looks spot on. Beautiful. So I'm pretty sure the fence is square, but let's check it out to make sure. I cut one corner and checked it off camera to see if it was square, but I decided to use the five cut method to really make sure. So mark the number one next to the corner we just cut. Now take the side we just cut and place it against the fence and make another cut. Put that side against the fence and make another cut. Do it again and we're back at the start. Then make one more cut. That's the fifth cut. If the fence isn't square, this corner will be off by an exaggerated amount since we made five cuts. But when I check it with a square, it's perfect. I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but trust me, there's no gaps at all. If you wanted to, you could do the whole measurement thing, but honestly, if you can't see a gap with a good square after five cuts, it's plenty good enough for woodworking. I'm adding two extra screws for the fence. This hole here was a mistake, but here's the final positions of my four screws. If you haven't trimmed your fence flush, do it now. Remove your fence and mark where to cut out the notch. Make sure you mark it on the correct side. I did a horrible job of filming this, but I'm leaving a three quarter inch piece at the bottom of the fence and cutting this part out. I'm using my table saw and a sled to cut out the notch. I'm not sure how safe this is, so you might prefer to use a jigsaw, or a bandsaw, or even a handsaw. I'm using my belt sander to add a chamfer. Make sure you add it to the leading edge. The chamfer helps prevent sawdust from building up between the fence and your stock. You could also sand it by hand, or use a router. If you want to do any final sanding to the fence, it's a good idea to do it now, before reattaching the fence. It's possible I forgot, but I'll deny it if anyone asks. When you reattach the fence to the sled, start the screws so the points stick out some, then line them up with the existing holes in your fence. I like to set my clutch really low at the start, because if you don't have the screws lined up with the existing holes, SPAC screws will start new holes on their own, and you might not even realize it. So I start slow and try to notice if there's any resistance. When I'm sure everything's fine, I change my clutch and finish the screws. I cut this small piece of melamine and sand it off one side. I'm gluing it on my sled to help keep my blade guard sides from falling down behind the fence. These little Jorgensen clamps work surprisingly well. They came as a bonus in a pack of bigger clamps I got a while back. And here's the final result. Don't forget to check out my links to products and other videos in the description below or on my website at thenewbiewoodworker.com. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified when I release a new video. Thanks!